Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Uh, we have endodontic surgery today. It's a very vast topic. I have uh, included very selected topics uh, like incision and drainage, trephination, uh, various flap designs for periradicular surgery and the corrective surgeries uh, such as hemisection, bicuspidation, uh, root resection. So the questions. Uh, which were asked for university paper I included so moving on uh, the periradicular surgery has continued to evolve into the precise biologically based adjunct to non-surgical root canal therapy uh, although non-surgical endodontic treatment gives good results in most of the cases uh, surgery sometimes uh, indicated for teeth with uh, persistent periradicular pathology uh, which are not responding to non-surgical approaches but most of the time uh, the problem will be resolved without any surgical involvement I mean procedure so Engel defined uh, it as a surgical procedure related to problem of the pulpless or predominantly involved tooth requiring root amputation and enterontic therapy so the rationale is to remove the causative agents for the periradicular pathology that is the focus of lesion and also to restore the periodontium to a state of biologic and functional health. The main objective is to ensure the placement of a proper seal between the periodontium and the root canal foramina. The classification of endodontic surgery includes uh, facility surgery such as IND, trephination and decompression periradicular surgery such as curatage, root end resection, uh, root end filling, corrective surgery, that is perforation repair, periodontal management and intentional implantation. So surgical drainage, it is indicated when uh, purulent or hemorrhagic exudates forms within the soft tissue and alveolar ball as a result of an asymptomatic periradicular abscess. So we can either perform a IND or cortical trephination. So IND is uh, by giving a local anesthesia and a horizontal incision with number 11 or 12 BP blade at the base of the flexion area and we can just uh, remove the pus. Uh, commonly used diatophum goes, rubber dam material and pentrose drain. Trephination is a cortical trephination. It's a procedure involving the perforation of the cortical plate to accomplish the release of pressure. So it's a uh, procedure like IND but it is going into the cortical bone. So the idea is to remove the exudate which is formed within the alveolar bone. We can use a burr number 6 or 8 burr uh, mostly from the buccal side. The objective is to create pathway through the cancellous bone to the vicinity of the involved periradicular tissues. Now the periradicular surgery uh, mostly uh, it involves a flap procedure. So first we need to learn the principles of flap. So the base of the flap should be wider than the free end. Avoiding the incision over a bony defect include the full extent of the lesion. Then avoid sharp corners and avoid incision across a bony eminence avoid incision in the mucogingival junction then taking care during retraction incision should be made with firm continuous stroke which is perpendicular to the cortical plate and the sutured flap margin should rest on solid cortical bone plate now we have classification so basically uh, we know the full thickness and partial thickness full thickness is known as mucoperiosteal and this is split full thickness consists of epithelium connective tissue and periosteum whereas a partial consists of epithelium and connective tissue there is no periosteum so full mucoperiosteal and limited mucoperiosteal it is based on the gutman and harrison classification full mucoperiosteal is full mucoperiosteal flap there is no attached gingiva around the neck of the crown. Whereas limited mucoperiosteal showing remaining attached gingiva. Then full mucoperiosteal flap includes, uh, it is based on the shape. 
triangular, rectangular, trapezoidal, horizontal or papilla base limited uh, is uh, submarginal curved or semilunar, submarginal scalloped rectangular or loop K or shin bin flap. Advantages of full uh, mucopyrosal flaps are rapid wound healing, good surgical access, minimal disruption of blood supply, minimal uh, post-surgical sequel, then optimal apical orientation and primary healing. But the problem is loss of soft tissue attachment, loss of crystal bone height and post-surgical flap dislodgement. Whereas the uh, uh, advantages of the limited mucopyrosal flaps are marginal and interdental gingiva are not involved, unaltered soft tissue attachment level, crystal bone is not exposed, adequate surgical access and good bone healing potential. But the main problem is flap shrinkage and disruption of blood supply to the unflapped tissues. Difficult to uh, reapproximate the flap, delayed secondary wound healing and limited apical orientation. Now let's see the designs of flap. The first one is triangular flap indicated in mild root perforation repair or periapical surgery in posterior areas with short roots. It has got good wound healing, minimal disruption of vascular supply to flap tissue, ease of flap reapproximation with minimum number of sutures. But the problems are limited surgical access, difficult to expose root apex of long teeth like maxillary and mandibular canine. Tension is created on retraction. So this is how it looks like. We are creating a triangular. You can see a triangular flap here. And we'll reflect it. So this is why it is known as triangular flap because of this shape. You can see how it is going. We are reflecting this part, that is a triangular part. But as a rectangular flap, which is indicated in mandibular anteriors and for multiple teeth or teeth with long roots like maxillary canine. It has got uh, increased surgical access to root apex, reduced retraction tension, but the problem is difficulty in reapproximation and post surgical stabilization is quite difficult. Gingival attachment uh, violated and the resistances of gingival recession, crystal bond loss may occur. Angular flap, both sides are getting vertical incision and we are just reflecting a flap in this way. Uh, the rectangular flap in triangular flap it was released only on one side whereas a trapezoidal flap which is almost similar to rectangular except the two vertical incision intersect the horizontal incision okay and an obtuse angle so there is a obtuse angle this angle is obtuse to create a broad based flap with vestibular part wider than the circular part. So this part is wider than this part. So in order to create, instead of going straight, we are going like a little bit wider. That is creating an obtuse angle. But the disadvantages are it is angled incision. Uh, it cuts more vital structures and there are chances of uh, bleeding disruption of vascular supply to non-flap tissues and shrinkage of flap tissues. The horizontal flap is a different one. It is not having any vertical incisions. It has got very limited application that is repair of cervical defects like root repair, reception or resorption or caries, hemisection and root amputation. Advantages is of repositioning as no vertical incision but the problems are limited access, difficult to reflect and retract because there is no vertical incision, predisposed to stretching and tearing. So this is a different uh, type, sub-marginal curved semi-lunar flap which is a limited mucoperiosteal flap. It is indicated in aesthetic crowns and for trephination. So this is a completely uh, not following a conventional method. There is no uh, vertical uh, incision and it is way 
away from the normal area that is it is at the cervical part of the root so it reduces incision and reflection time it maintains integrity of gingival attachment eliminates potential crestal bond loss since it is not affecting all these vital parts there is no chance of uh, recession or crestal bond loss when we have uh, concerns of aesthetics we can go for this submarginal curved or semi lunar flap but the problems uh, the access and visibility will be less tendency for increased hemorrhage crosses root eminence may not include entire lesion predisposed to stretching and tearing repositioning is difficult healing is associated with scar the second one submarginal scalloped rectangular or loop k ocean bin flap it's commonly asked question it is a rectangular flap which is in the same position this is just a semi lunar flap but this is a rectangular flap in that position so it is having horizontal incision is placed in the buccal uh, attached gingiva and it is scalloped follows the contour of the marginal gingiva and it is uh, having two vertical incision but it is way away from the uh, marginal gingiva and it is more towards the uh, root apex it is indicated in prosthetic crown periradicular surgery of anterior region or longer roots the advantages are ease of incision and reflection enhance visibility and access ease of repositioning maintains the integrity of attachment it prevents gingival recession avoid dissens prevent crestal bond loss but the problems are horizontal component disrupt blood supply vertical uh, components crosses a mucogingival junction and may enter muscle tissues and difficult to alter if size of lesion is judged now we have corrective surgery it's very commonly asked it is categorized as surgery involving the correction of the defects in the body of the root other than apex okay so it is mainly on the body of the root so corrective surgical procedures may be necessary as a result of procedural accidents resorptions it could be internal or external root caries or root fracture or periodontal disease it involves basically root resection hemisection and intentional replantation which root resection hemisection are very important root amputation procedures are a logical way to eliminate a weak diseased root to allow stronger roots to survive if retained together they would collectively fail so in order to have a better prognosis we are removing a part of a tooth or a single root of a multi rooted teeth in order to save the other two otherwise it would, it would have collectively failed so distance between pulp chamber and floor and coronal aspect of the root separation uh, should be 3 mm and 2 mm uh, width should be there uh, for the establishment of the supra crestal attachment apparatus and 1 mm for the placement of the crown margins so indications are existence of periodontal bone loss to the extent that periodontal therapy and patient maintenance do not sufficiently improve the condition destruction of a root through resorptive processes caries or mechanical perforations and surgically inoperable roots that are calcified contain separated instruments or are grossly curved the fracture of one root that does not involve the other conditions that indicate the surgery will be technically feasible to perform and the prognosis is reasonable but the contraindications are lack of necessary osseous support for the remaining roots and fused roots or root in unfavorable proximity to each other remaining root or roots endodontically inoperable lack of patient motivation next we have hemi section okay hemi section is defined as a separation of multi rooted tooth and the removal of a root and the associated portion of the clinical crown so we are completely splitting a tooth from the root end to the crown tip so when there is deep periodontal pocket we 
can uh, raise a flap then resect the tooth and sutures be placed whereas a bisection or bicuspidation it refers to division of a crown that leaves the two halves and the respective roots so bicuspidation should be considered we are not removing it we are just uh, making it two so it should be considered mandibular molars in which the periodontal disease has invaded the bifurcation and repair of internal forcation perforation has been unsuccessful so when this involved in that bifurcation area we can just split the tooth not removing it so the forcation is then turned into interproximal space so we are making it as a two teeth so this interproximal space will be more manageable by the patient after the bike aspiration so this is how it is done we are uh, changing it to a two teeth okay so once it is healed the patient will be able to clean this teeth or it is it can be uh, crowned or make it as a two premolars so that was all about uh, resective surgery the bicuspidation hemisection and root amputation are most commonly asked question with uh, the flap design these flaps are very important this uh, various types of flap mucoperiosteal flaps and limited mucoperiosteal flap so yeah. all these uh, flaps are very important so that was all about um, the endodontic surgery i have included only the very important uh, questions of endodontic surgery so i'll come up with a new topic in uh, endodontics thank you